everyone. It's James Milan with another edition of Talk of the Town. You know that in this series we like to go around uh, the town of Arlington speaking to local officials and folks doing interesting work all over Arlington. Certainly a great example of that is our animal control officer, Katie Kozakowski. And we are here today, uh, the calendar says that it's spring. Um, but as often happens in New England, we are still waiting for the weather gods to get that message. Um, but we are here in McLennan Park to talk to Katie uh, about basically the things that are, people can anticipate or might be thinking about as we move, theoretically, from winter into spring. Um, so, first of all, uh, I'm interested to know there's got to be a cycle to your year in general. And yeah. what's, what, what have you been up to? during the winter months because you'd be, I think, a little bit less visible than you usually are at Arlingtonians mm -hmm. in the winter. <laughs> what, what takes up your time and energy? So in the winter, I try and, I mean, I'm still out there for sure. It's more of patrolling, make sure people are following the rules and everything with their dogs. The summertime is a little bit more busy just because obviously you have more people visiting. Um, they have more animals that are out and about too and generally in the winter time, you would think not as many people would be out with their dogs, but it's party souls, we New Englanders, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of more going out, socializing with people, um, going around the parks, just making sure everybody's following the rules. And during the winter months, I can plan for a lot more um, educational things that we can do too. Like I go to schools, um, the Go Green Club. Um, I do things with like Boy Scout troops, stuff like that. Do talks that way we can go out and talk to kids about. Um, how they should meet dogs, how they should go about petting a dog, um, what they should look out for in wild animals, what they should not do with wild animals, kind of that kind of stuff. So it gives me a little bit more time for that opposed to getting a call every five minutes or so for wildlife or something that might happen in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to start gearing up for that, that yes, pace getting prepared here for pretty it. soon. <laughs> so speaking about wild animals, that's something that people you know, tend to think about as we start moving into a time when we'll all be more outside and more visible as, mm -hmm. as will the animals. Uh, I know there's been some talk around town about coyote sightings and you know it'd be great to get you know the word from 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 somebody who really knows about what we should be concerned about, what we shouldn't be concerned about, what misconceptions there might be, etc. So let's yeah. talk about coyotes first. Sure. So we did actually recently, a couple months ago, we had um, the Belmont Animal Control Officer, who's the representative of Massachusetts for Project Coyote. He came in, he did a talk for some of the residents, and I know a couple of people, other people in town have contacted him about it too, because they are seeing them a lot more. And I, usually like around February is gonna be their mating season, so that's why recently people have been really seeing them. Um, but I think also people are kind of they're more shocked that they're seeing them because they don't expect to see them in a community with houses so close together and so many people out here too. Did that not used to be the case or has that in fact always been the case that there's been coyotes around even in densely populated Arlington? Yeah, I mean, they're gonna be here. It's we're kind of, we're building on their land. So they have to go somewhere. Before when maybe there weren't so many houses or weren't so many people here, they'd be a little bit less visible because they have more wooded areas to be in, more wooded areas to hunt in. Whereas here, you see how close the houses are together and there's still, there's rabbits, there's small animals that they hunt and they're gonna have to do that somewhere. It just happens to be in your backyard now because they have nowhere else to go. So I'd say there's still still the same amount, if not maybe a little bit less, mm -hmm. but people are just concerned because they don't expect to see it so close to the city. Any idea of what that population generally would be? I, I imagine that it's only a guesstimate that could be made, but. Yeah, I don't know exactly how many are in Arlington. Um, I don't think there's a huge amount. I mean, we've got a pretty small town and generally coyotes, um, they don't live in packs like wolves do. They live with their families, which eventually will separate and kind of go their own ways. But coyotes kind of have their own home turf. Like one group of coyotes may have like a two square mile area in town that they don't let any other coyotes come into. So where somebody might be thinking that they've seen six coyotes, they might actually just be seeing the same one six times and they just assume that there's gonna be a lot here. So it, I don't really know just cause we don't have trackers on all of them or I don't know what each one specifically looks like, but I'd say there's not, there's not a huge amount of them in here. So I usually get phone calls about coyotes in the same area all the time by different people, which we assume is either the family or the same one that's going around too. And so do people, you know, I think some people are concerned about any interactions with coyotes. What, mm -hmm. what, what do, would you like to say to those folks? 
Um, I'd say don't be scared. A lot of people are nervous, which I mean, I don't blame them. If you've got a wild dog coming up to you, you've got a small kid or small dog or anything like that, then yeah, you do have reason to be cautious about it. But coyotes are more, they are, they're scared of people. They don't want to interact with people, but when they're living in a community like this, they get used to being around people. So I wouldn't say that they're getting bold. I would say they're kind of adjusting to living with all of us. So if people are walking by the street, they're used to walking by those people and having them do absolutely nothing, then they don't really have a reason to be concerned, which not everybody knows too. So with coyotes, the more you can show them they should be scared of people, the better off you're going to be and the more likely they are to run away from you if they see you again too. Right. And ways to do that, I assume, would just be I don't know, being loud in some way or just yelling oh, yeah. at them. Yeah, just make some noise, clap your hands, bang some pots and pans together. Usually even just banging on a window or opening a door is enough to scare them off. Um, I've gone to a couple calls where people were concerned that they were in their backyard and they were sleeping, open the door, they see you and they'll take off immediately. So it all depends on how comfortable that coyote is around people, obviously, but the more the more you scare them, the more it's going to show them that they shouldn't be comfortable around people. And they'll find somewhere to go. It's not like they're going to leave forever or anything like that. But I think what a lot of people want to do is just totally remove them from Arlington, which isn't legal in Massachusetts. You can't relocate any wildlife. So that's not something we have an option to do. So the best thing to do is to educate people on how they can keep, their self, keep themselves safe, keep their animals safe, their kids safe, and what to do to keep them out of your yard if you don't want them in there too. If you do, they're beautiful animals. So mm -hmm. take a picture, it's <laughs> good to go from there. <laughs> and you mentioned um, just a little bit earlier wolves as well. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about the distinctions between coyotes and wolves, and also there's something called a coy wolf, which I didn't, I didn't know. I have to say, <laughs> um, what? Just tell us about those animals as well. And do um, we uh, do we see coy wolves in in Arlington? Or? Well, a coy wolf. So an eastern coyote, which is what we have out here, and a coy wolf are pretty much the same thing. They're okay. all wolf hybrids. Um, so you're not going to see wolves out in this area, anyways. You're going to see the coy wolf eastern coyote out here too mm -hmm. and the coyotes are smaller Much than wolves smaller, right? yep mm -hmm. and wolves generally will tend to travel in packs whereas coyotes are only traveling in their family pack mm -hmm. so that's a difference kind of between them there i don't i don't know too much about wolves just because we generally don't tend to see them out in this area but i know that they're at least a hybrid of them um they're scared of people that you want them to be scared of people kind mm -hmm. of thing so. Mm -hmm. same so, so same principles apply yeah 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 um <laughs> Other, I mean, I'll ask you about a couple of things and then I'll invite you to talk to us about, you know, stuff sure. that you would like people to know in, yeah. in terms of this time of year. Um, so another, you know, again, I'm, I'm mindful of what you were saying earlier about, you know, people may be seeing the same coyote, you know, various times and think they're seeing different yeah. ones. So I feel like I've, I see turkeys. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, and maybe I'm seeing the same two or three or something, and they're just prancing around in the same, uh, yeah. in the same circle. But uh, you know, what what about you know what about the turkey population of Arlington and the surrounding areas? Is, is um, that a are, are they a problem? Is is there anything that people should do you know about them? Do you just is it just demand that you be patient as they're taking their time <laughs> crossing the street in front of your car or whatever? No, that's the biggest pain about them. <laughs> so turkeys, I mean. There are a good amount of them in Arlington, that's for sure. I don't know if they kind of act the same way coyotes do, where they just live in families or if they allow others in. That I'm not 100% sure about, but I know there are definitely a couple of groups of them around. The reason that they're in a lot of the neighborhoods with a lot of people are because people are unknowingly feeding, feeding them. So like bird feeders, stuff like that. If squirrels get to them, knock the stuff to the ground, or if the birds knock the seed to the ground, that's going to be something that attracts the uh, turkeys to come in and eat their food too. So um, that... We definitely want to encourage people if they're going to feed birds in the backyard, don't put anything on the ground and get the little catch basins or whatever they are right underneath it just to kind of catch anything that might fall mm -hmm. so you don't attract turkeys to your backyard. Um, they, as for crossing the road or kind of being annoying with traffic anyways, a lot of people think that they are very stubborn birds where in fact they're kind of, they're more like not smart birds is what I <laughs> would say. As opposed to um, all those smart birds yeah, out exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. Well, most of all them, you walk up near a bird, they fly away and you <laughs> right. think, oh, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. Turkeys are like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is my land. So they don't know that when they're crossing the street, if a car hits them, they're not going to be here anymore. They're like, okay, I got to get from one place to another. I'm going to make sure that I can get there and they're going to cross the road if they have to. And then they'll go after people's cars sometimes because they are attracted to the shininess if they see the reflection in the car or anything like that. 
Um, a lot of times you'll hear, I think last year there was an article um, online that was going around about turkeys attracting, um, attacking a mail carrier. And that's because they're attracted to red, white, and blue. So they're attracted to their uniforms and to their trucks. So too. this is not just American turkeys, like U.S. 100% <laughs> really American turkeys. But... the United States. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so do you have much interaction with turkeys? Is there a reason why you would have to deal with them much, other than to um, basically let people know if they're calling in, hey, this is the story? That's, yeah, that's pretty much there. I mean, they hang out by the bracket school a lot because I think there's houses down there that are feeding them, not on purpose, right. but by mistake. Again, in, in the way and, you were describing. Yeah, exactly. So I get a, calls kind of a lot to go down there just because there's kids down there, and they're also attracted to people running. So when the kids are running, the turkeys will chase them. Um, so that's kind of the main reason that I get calls about them, or if there's turkeys in the road kind of thing. And I know the animal control officer before me was able to kind of guide them because they were right in the middle of Mass Ave. If you turn on the blue lights on a cruiser, they follow those blue lights and you can kind of like track them to go along the side of the road too. So. And this may be self-evident, but you know, just as a last point here, um, turkeys we, we might say are kind of dumb, um, but they're not aggressive, I assume. They're not, they don't they pose a threat be. or they can? They can, yeah. So okay. you don't ever, I mean, you have a male turkey who's gonna protect all the females. Generally, there's gonna be one adult male that's in there who's gonna protect all of his females. And if you come up and you threaten them, then yeah, he will come at you. So I'd never recommend chasing turkeys, never recommend having them chase you, anything like that. Some people think that it's funny. It's not something you wanna do. If you get pecked by that, that's really gonna hurt. And I would just recommend avoiding that altogether. Um, you can do things to keep them out of your yard. Like they are attracted to shiny things, but they're, they get scared of um, like those little windmills that you can put in your yard, the shiny mm -hmm. windmills, or if you put like a moving balloon or anything like that. Like if um, I've gotten a couple calls for people that are nervous to go outside because every time they go out, the male turkey will fan his feathers and they get nervous he's gonna attack them. Bring something like an umbrella to pop open at them. Mm -hmm. That'll scare them a little bit more too. If it's kind of like the immediate fright that'll scare them away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you're chasing them, he's gonna defend himself too. And I don't think you wanna get into a fight with a turkey. No, sounds <laughs> like not. Um, and just a, just as, a, as an aside, uh, something that you said before about turkeys kind of being attracted either to people running or uh, to certain other kinds of things or enjoying chasing um, or just not getting out of the way, mm -hmm. right? When, when the car's coming along or something like that. It reminds me very much, I, I, for years I commuted along the river, uh, along the Charles River into, into Boston from Arlington. And uh, I was always struck by the flocks of geese that were on the bike path. Yeah. And I mean, they have to be used to the fact that people are constantly on the bikes coming by there, yeah. but they, they, were, they behaved as if, um, you know, it had never happened before. Yeah. Um, that's just, I guess, typical <laughs> bird behavior in some that's, ways? Or? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's like if you're used to riding your bike on the side of a really busy road, you're used to having those cars zoom by you. If you're used to riding your bike on a really quiet road and a car zooms by you, it scares you a little bit more. So you kind of get used to that stuff. And you'll see like with any type of bird, usually if you watch the geese, if you're like down by the Mystic River or anything like that, you'll see one goose that's up looking around while everybody else is eating. And then in the next group, you'll see the exact same thing. You've always got one that's watching out just in case there's a predator coming or if they see something like if something unexpected is coming, they're going to be the first ones to see it to warn everybody else whose heads at the ground eating food. Does that does that responsibility of being kind of that 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 guard that on on shift there, um, does that kind of just move around to different, you know, different members of a flock or are some kind of designated like like you have alpha males in you know in, in a canine group I think that's mainly what it is i think it's like the male in that group is the one who's responsible for all the females around or all the young that are around too so at least in turkeys it's the male turkey that's going to be the head one geese i'm not 100 percent sure but i would bet likely that's probably the same thing that's going on too okay so what would you you know like uh to talk about um, in, in our remaining time in terms of just, you know, letting people know things that would be important for them to know as we move into actual spring and summer eventually, <laughs> it gets et cetera. Warm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the most important thing I would say is you're going to start to see, especially because we had those really weird couple of warm days like a month ago or a couple of weeks ago, is um, you're going to start to see babies really soon. You're going to see baby squirrels, baby skunks, baby raccoon, all that kind of stuff. The best thing, and baby birds, the best thing to do is 
if you're not sure if the mother is around or you're, there's not like a deceased adult nearby or anything like that, the best thing to do is if you see an infant, leave it where it is. Um, a lot of people think that picking them up and taking them inside is helpful for them. That's not something that they're used to. You're not their mom. You don't know how to appropriately feed them. Um, the best thing to do is to wait to monitor to see if something is coming back. And there's several different ways that you can do that too. I think I sent some links in um, for what to do if you come across some um, orphaned wildlife. Yeah, those, there's a lot of really helpful information in there, especially with baby bunnies. A lot of people will think that they're abandoned because they're in the ground. Their burrows are built in the ground and the mother puts like old grass or anything that she can find over them to hide them. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't spend any time with them during the day. So when people don't see the mom come back, they think that they're abandoned. They'll pick them up, put them in a box and want to bring them somewhere. Whereas now the mother comes back and her nest is totally empty, but she wasn't there because she didn't want to attract predators to the babies too. So if an orphan baby is found, you can call me, call a, a wildlife rehabilitator. They can tell you what to do to watch out to see if mom is coming back or not. Um, if they're not coming back, then they can let you know where you can take it. But if you pick up an orphan baby, if you don't want to feed it, don't give it anything. You want to bring it to the appropriate people who know how to take care of it before you do anything too. And um, in a situation like that, is there a, a, a time frame in which if you don't see the mom, then you would know, okay, she's not coming back, or there's no really set rule, and on the whole, you, you should really just yeah, hands I, off as much as possible? That's what I would say, because if you're kind of hovering over a nest or hovering over babies, no, you're not going to see the mom come back because she's watching you waiting for you to leave. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood of you actually physically seeing a mom come in is going to be pretty low but you can do things like around a baby's uh, baby bunny nest you can put um, sprinkle like flour around the outside and you can watch for footprints that's going to be the best way to figure out if something's coming back by leaving something that you can see footprints in because they're not going to come if you're there because you're much bigger than they are and you're a predator to them so they want to make sure they're safe but also keep the baby safe too and it can really stress moms out if they see um, humans or kids playing around their babies as well or watching or handling or anything like that. Sure. I'm, I'm sure we look just as threatening as any, yeah. you know, any other creature the mom would be worried about. So exactly. that makes sense. Anything else that folks should know? Um, I would say in the spring and summertime too, uh, a lot of people give me calls because they see raccoons or skunks out during the daytime. And that's actually, it's not a huge issue, especially in an area like this. They're not necessarily going to be nocturnal in a town that has quite so many people in it and not as many places to sleep or more food out during the daytime. Mm -hmm. Because if they're able, if say they're living in like an old tree or something like that, it's gonna get very hot in there during the day. They might not wanna sleep during the daytime. They might wanna come out and hunt or look for food, gather food at that time as well. So if you see a raccoon or a skunk who's kind of walking around like normal, not falling over, sniffing the ground, digging in the ground, looking for food, that's absolutely fine. There's really nothing to worry about in that case. If you don't want them in your yard, yeah, make some noise, bang your hands together, bang some pots and pans together, that kind of stuff to get them out. But if you notice a raccoon or any mammal who's circling or falling over, or if their face looks really goopy, if they look sick like they have a cold or anything like mm -hmm. that, at that point, that's cause for concern. We wanna make sure that animal doesn't have a disease or is not gonna spread anything to you, your family, or your pets as well. So the main concern with that is if an animal is out during the day, looks fine, leave it, if it looks sick or there's something wrong with it, give us a call and we'll take care of it. All right. So, and I know you had asked, um, I know there were some questions like what to do on the weekends if I'm not here. Yeah. So awesome. the most important thing to do is if, if you don't know if I'm here or not, call the police department because sometimes I am here on the weekends. If they can send me out, they absolutely will. Um, they will have a police officer go out and check it out too. If it's an injured wild, if it's some type of injured wildlife that needs to get rehabbed, you can always call the Animal Rescue League that's in Boston as well. And if they have somebody available, they can send them down to take a look at them and pick them up too. So okay. there is always another option if I'm not here. So. Yeah, and I know that you had spoken earlier about how, in fact, police officers can respond um, to a number of the same kinds of situations as you would respond to. Yep. Um, so if you happen not to be around still the police department is the place to turn to and yeah, somebody will be able to as attend. As long as there's not any other emergencies going on and it is something that they can help with, if it's an urgent matter, then absolutely the police department, they're very, very good about going down. Um, they'll go in, check it out, see if it is an emergency situation, they'll handle it. If they need to call me in, they will do that too. Um, but if, I mean, if they need to be dispatched somewhere, they're absolutely going to respond to it. 
Well, before we let you go, I wanted to ask, um, the last time I got to talk to you, um, formally anyway, was uh, just uh, shortly into your time here. And I know it's been a couple of years now um, in, this, in this job. And obviously two years is not a lifetime, but it's also kind of given you a chance, I think, to have a, a breath of experience here in Arlington. Yeah, exactly. Wondering if there's anything, you know, what, what if, if you're sitting around with friends and, you know, somebody says, you know, what, what's the funniest thing that's happened or what's the weirdest thing that's happened that you've had to deal with? Uh, do, mm -hmm. do you have any, any, you know, anecdotes to share with us about, you know, something just unusual? Hmm. I'd say most of the stuff that's weird that I deal with are like the weird wildlife calls that I'll get. Or like I uh, chased a domestic duck through a neighborhood once and <laughs> I picked him up. We have no idea where he came from at all, but somebody called me and they were like, there's a weird looking duck out here and we've never seen it before. We don't know where he is. And I couldn't find him. And then I was getting all different calls from just the same general area. So I chased a duck, so ducks are getting <laughs> which <rice>. is weird. <laughs> but um, other than that, it's just, it's a lot of, I think, fun, exciting wildlife things like pulling little baby skunks out of drains or helping like raccoons that get their heads stuck in trash cans, that kind of stuff too. So I wouldn't say there's anything extra weird going on. Hopefully nothing extra weird happens, but I guess it'll be something exciting. <laughs> right, it'll be exciting and then you will have something to say when you're yeah. sitting around with your friends and they ask a question like that. <laughs> yeah, so no, Arlington, I mean Arlington's really good. People who live in this town are really good at helping with things too. Um, so if I, like with the duck, somebody came out and they helped me kind of corner it. They came out with a blanket so he wouldn't keep running around. Or I actually, um, I guess here's a story. I was helping a swan who was trying to jump over that giant fence that's next to Route 2. He was trying to get over that. And I had a bus driver who helped me corner him in somebody's driveway. He was a, um, an out-of-service MBTA bus. And he blocked the bird in the driveway is so I could right? catch him and put him in my van. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. That is kind of cool. And how often are you going to have a convenient out-of-service bus know, there to like, create a roadblock? This is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. Well, we'll let you, let you get back to that fun and exciting work uh, <laughs> now. And we'll look forward to, you know, we'll talk to you again sometime soon. Hopefully yeah, uh, sometime within this next year as the cycles move through, we'll, we'll have when more to say when it comes, out. right. When <laughs> Maybe when we're moving out of the warm weather and into the cooler weather in the fall, we'll, we'll, we'll check in with you again. Yeah, sounds good to me. Thanks for spending time with us <laughs> yeah, today. Thank you very much. <laughs> for Arlington's Animal Control Officer, Katie Kozakowski, and for Talk of the Town, I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us.